The book of Jeremiah, chapter number 20, the Bible says there in verse number 9, it says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was with, his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side, report, say they, and we were reported. All my fami familiars watched my halting, saying, peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous, and seeth the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my cause. Jeremiah was, was an Israelite priest who lived and, and worked in Jerusalem during the, the final decades of the kingdom of southern Judah, before they went into captivity in Babylon. He was called as a prophet to warn Israel of a severe upcoming consequences that they would suffer because of their rebelliousness, because of their indifference, because of their idolatry and wickedness. He uh, pleaded to them to turn back, to turn back to God, that God's promises were true, but they were stiff-necked people. They rejected his message and they rejected his ministry. And we know Jeremiah to be the weeping prophet. He weeped most of his life because of a stiff-necked people, because of what he thought to be a, a failure in ministry. Since he was born, he was born into the ministry. And Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that he, he was called even before he was in the womb. All he ever knew was church. All he ever knew was junior church, uh, junior choir. All he ever knew was uh, the, the morning service, the afternoon service, the Wednesday night Bible study, the soul winning time, the prayer meeting time, the conference, the youth conference, the, the family camp, uh, the, the team camp. All he ever knew was church all his life. And he was faithful to his ministry. God made no mistake in calling Je uh, uh, Jeremiah to do his will, his contemporaries were different than him. Ezekiel had a heart of diamond. He was a strong leader and maybe had a more fruitful, to some degree, ministry. More people listened to him. But Jeremiah was the, the weeping prophet, the, the guy that was rejected most of his life. Yet he remained faithful. He remained true to his calling. And we find him here in chapter number 20 of Jeremiah wanting to quit. I want to talk to you this afternoon of the subject when you find yourself running on empty. You see, I don't know how everyone is here this afternoon. I, I, I'm thankful that you came to conference. I'm thankful that you're here. There had to have been some willing spirit in you to want to come, uh, even if it was an encouragement from your parents or your youth pastor was after you, but you're here. And that says a lot about you. And I believe God's will is good. I believe God's will is good. And I believe the journey in God's will is good as well. What God allows us to see in the process of helping us reach the destiny of his, of, of his purpose uh, uh, and, and what he wants for our life and what he wants to accomplish, I believe God is good even in the journey, even as we wait to get to where he wants us to get. But sometimes along the way, Better Christians than you and me have found themselves running on empty. You know, I believe that amongst us are young people that have a tender heart, that want to serve the Lord. We've been, we've been shown, it's been, a, it's been manifested in front of us. People have been called to serve the Lord. People responded. People have gotten saved this week and, and how God has worked in hearts. But I, maybe, just maybe, here today, maybe 
there's a couple of us here that might find themselves running on empty. Maybe you're thinking of jumping out of the will of God. Maybe you're contemplating making a U-turn. Maybe you're contemplating this afternoon saying, you know, I came to youth conference, but God didn't speak to me. I think I'm finished with this. I don't know what you've seen in life. I don't know what God has allowed in your life to happen. Maybe some discouragement has come your way. Maybe someone has hurt you. Maybe someone has failed you. Maybe someone has backstabbed you. Maybe someone, someone has lost their testimony in front of you. Maybe something has happened in your life that's maybe gotten you to the point where you feel like you're running on empty. You have no more combustion, no more gas, no more fire inside you for wanting to keep going. Maybe you tried and you failed. Maybe you, you lost your testimony. Maybe, maybe things didn't turn out the way you thought that they should turn out. Maybe things at home aren't the way they're supposed to be. Maybe your parents are going through a, a difficult problem and you're here at youth conference, but all you're thinking of is the situation at home and your parents uh, that are talking things that they shouldn't be talking and it brings fear to your heart. Maybe there's things going on in, back home in church that things aren't the way they're supposed to be. Uh, there's been problems, there's been difficulties with the leadership and it's caused discouragement to you. I don't know where you are today. But maybe you find yourself running on empty. I want to share with you what to do when you find yourself running on empty. Father, please bless today's message as you have already this morning since the morning I felt your spirit here. There's no doubt in my heart and my mind that you are here, Lord. And Father, never before has a youth conference been more important. With times the way they are and things that are happening, so many Abandoning their faith. So many attacks on social media and people that are criticizing and attacking the word of God and so many things going on in the political world and so many threats and so many things we hear of, Lord. There's no question in my mind that this youth conference and any of them that are going on in the nation have never been more important. Father, please use this word, this message. For your honor and glory in Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever been there? I can tell you several times, and I, I, I'm almost as a confession, but I, I won't bore you with the details, but I've been in the place where I've wanted to, I've considered, I, I've contemplated, I have felt that there is no no more else, no, no, nothing else to do. I, I have gotten to a point as a young person, I, I was saved at 16 years of age and, and I was called to serve the Lord at 17 at a youth camp and I surrendered fully. I left everything behind. When I got home from camp, I did away with all my tapes and my, and my records and I got rid of all that music and I got rid of clothing uh, that I wore out to when I would go out to nightclubs with my friends and so on and so forth. I, I threw away everything in a, in a trash bag as soon as I get home because I knew that if I stayed with those things, I might not make it in the, in the Christian faith. I, I just felt that I was, there was another world that I, that I had left that God had called me from. And, and I, I went and did that and I surrendered. I remember standing in front of the church uh, family and on a Sunday morning and confessing that God had called me to the ministry. And, and I remember hearing other guys that had, were way more talented and more, uh, that grew up in church. I didn't grow up in church, but they grew up in church and they, they stood up and said, I, if God doesn't use me, then I want, then he, you know, I've told him to kill me. And I, and I sat there and just listening to, to all these uh, testimonies and and, and I just always felt like I, I'm not enough. I, I don't know if God can use me, but I, I want him to use me. I, I do. I, I desire for nothing greater in my life that God would use my life. And, and as a young person, I, I remember growing, in, growing up in a church. That the first thing I, I experienced as a young person, I was 18 years of age. I, I was in my last semester of Christian school. I left my public school. Uh, because I, I knew I wasn't going to make it if I stayed in public school. I was heavily involved in football and, and, uh, and basketball and baseball. And I had a whole life, a whole clique, a whole, you know, party life going on with that too. And I said, I have to leave public school. And I joined Christian school my last uh, senior year there in, 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 our, in our church and went there. And God started changing my life. And I started growing in the Lord faster than I can, I can, I can just... I can imagine just started growing in the Lord and, 
and uh, I remember that, that, for that last semester of my senior year, I, we got word that our, our senior pastor at the time um, fell into sin. And I remember not understanding everything about it. I, I was so new in the faith that I just, I just said to myself, well, what, what happens? I, I mean, is he just, just gets disciplined and he keeps going. And, and I remember him having to resign and, and it broke our hearts. It broke the whole church heart. It went through a, a devastating year of just travail and difficulties. And I, and I remember that uh, the, the next pastor came and took the church and, and everything was fine. Everything was great. And we were, the church was growing and, and I was with the Spanish ministry and, and the English church was growing and everything was fine. And then fast forward a decade, 10 years later, and the pastor fell into sin. And I was just like, oh, I mean, is this what it's all about? I mean, is it just, are they all fake? I said to myself, is it about, is it, are they, is it always going to be like this? And I remember getting to a place where I, I was just discouraged. I remember working on a bus route and, and working and what I was doing, I was just thinking, is it worth it all? Is it, I mean, are they all fake, Lord? And, and, and just discouraged. I remember being in Bible college and, and trying to study and, 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 and I was just discouraged. I remember one time I, I was um, supposed to head from work, I was working at the time in USC, uh, U USC uh, at, on the campus as a janitor in the, in the middle of the night, and I, I had to get up uh, er, early in the morning, finish or work, work in early morning, 6, 6, 30 in the morning, and hurry to about a 45 minute drive to Bible College where I was attending, and I had to, my first class at 745, so I had 45 minutes to get there. And uh, man, I was driving, and, and I, was, I was late already, and I was driving, and I, it was final exams, and my car ran out of gas. And I was there uh, in, in the side of the road just wondering, you know, what am I going to do? I, uh, there was no Uber or anything like that back in the day. And there's no taxis in Southern California driving just around anywhere. So I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. How, there was no cell phones. I didn't have any cell phones. I didn't have a cell phone. So I didn't know what to do. I was just sitting on the side of the road without, without any gas. And, and I had a, a car that, that a friend of mine would, had lent me. But I failed to check and see if it had gas. And I was sitting on the side of the road just complaining. Complaining about everything that we had been seeing at church. Complaining about the fact that I don't have gas, I, I'm not going to make it to, to college on time to take the test. I mean, I just had a bad day that day, and I remember, you know, walking to a nearby gasoline station and had to ask people, because I had no money, I had to ask people for, for money so I could fill up a, a little tank of gas to walk back to the car, and, and uh, people would reject me, and people would just ignore me, and so finally somebody gave me some, some money, and I filled up the little tank with just a few bucks, and, and, uh, and I went back and filled up the tank, and when I got, the, when I got in, the, in the car, I filled up the tank, I, I'm driving to, to the college, and I remember that day because I fell asleep at the wheel. <laughs> And, uh, and before I know it, I, you know, I used, to, I used to play with the, with the road because I, I was always falling asleep. So I used to play with the road. And if I, if I was, I would on purpose go over the little bumps on the, on the, on the free, on the expressway, you know, just make sure that I'm, I'm going straight. So I'd hear the whole time, bum, 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 bum. So, but I, that was my method of staying awake. And I mean, at this point, I'm, I, I'm falling asleep. I'm trying to take off my shirt because I, I'm throwing water on me. I'm trying to stay, do everything I can to get, get there in one piece. I fell asleep, and the next thing I know, I was stuck in between. Half of the car was underneath a semi-truck. And I can see the front wheels in front of me and the back wheels behind me, and, and I'm bumping up against the truck, and, I'm, and as soon as I see this, I, I mean, I just froze, and, and I took the car out, not even minding to see if there was another car coming. I got out of the semi-truck, and, and I, my heart's going at 100 miles per hour. I pull over, and I pull over to the gas station, and I'm barely with any gas, and I'm almost died, and I'm complaining about things going, and it felt like the Lord right there and then spoke to me and said, you know, Andy, I have been nothing but good in your life, and you're sitting here complaining and worried about other people and what they've done or not done, and, and, and complaining about this, yet I've provided you every which way. And it's just, I can feel the Lord telling me, reminding me how good he has been in my life. And I felt like I was at the end of my rope. I felt like I was discouraged. I wanted to quit school. I thought it was too much. It was too much sacrifice, too much, too many struggles. It wasn't supposed to be this difficult. I started thinking, man, had I stayed in, 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 in high school, had I stayed in, in following my career, maybe I'd be in some university right now playing some kind of sport. What am I doing here in the middle of nowhere without any gas, without, without all these problems in my life and I just was complaining and I, I find that sometimes in life if we're not careful we can get exactly there because of circumstances that are out of, out of our control because of other people because of problems that come in our life we can get to a place where we find ourselves running 
<laughs> on empty. I knew I was running on empty. I mean, I was doing everything I was supposed to do. I was on the bus ride. I was, I was going so many. I was in the, in the choir. I was an usher. I was doing everything I was supposed to do, but I was empty inside. That is the most dangerous place to be as Christians. Jeremiah found himself empty. He was struggling. He had to look inside. He had to remember some things that helped him, that helped him recover. It was God that day that helped Jeremiah. Listen, young person, I, I don't know where you're at this afternoon, but I know this, that you can easily fool anybody. I know that sometimes it's by our way of our attitude that we can show that, that we're running on empty. There's some people that just you can't hide it. Their attitude is, it stinks. It's time to sing, and they're not singing. It's time to come forward. They don't ever move from their, from their, from their seat. They, they've been here, done that. They've been all the, all the youth conferences, and they're just sitting there, and I'm not judging you. I have not tried to pick you out or, or look at somebody, but I know how, young, how, how it is to be young in the, in the will of God, how it is to be young in church and in conferences and, and serving the Lord. I know how easy it is to concentrate more on the things we do than rather the things or who we are, and that's how we get to places like Jeremiah got to. I, I'm not, I, I don't know all the... You know, all the details of how exactly uh, Jeremiah, uh, uh, who rejected him and, and how he came to the conclusion that he would not no more preach the word of God. He was frustrated. It's obvious he was tired. The Bible says he was weary. He was weary from within. He, he was tired. And, you know, the Bible tells us very clearly that, uh, and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint on. You know, I've seen it in my lifetime. I've been a Christian for just about 35 years. I've seen many times over again, young people and good people, good Christians, doing everything right. Doing everything right. Being the model Christian, being the model teen, being the model young lady, and being uh, serving in everything and uh, to capacity. And they're the ones that sing the special. And they have the talent to play the piano. And they're the ones helping with the sound system. And they're the ones with the uh, being helping as an usher. And they sing in the choir also. And then they help someone in the altar. And I've seen people like that. Listen, I've seen people like that so involved but empty inside. And from one moment to the other, they quit on everything. And you hear things like, what happened to so-and-so? Yeah, they came to youth conference, but now they're not even in church. Yeah, I've heard of people that, yeah, they even sang. They were in part of the tour group. They sang in the, in the youth choir. They sang in the adult choir. They played music, instruments in the orchestra. They were serving alongside their youth pastor. They were, in the, in the, they were one of the leaders, the teen leaders. They helped in, in vacation Bible school. They were so involved. And the next thing you hear is they fell into sin and she's pregnant and he left his house and he's in drugs now and and she got caught doing this and what happened I'll tell you what happened at one point or the other somewhere in time somewhere in their life they started running on empty pastors have left the ministry because they found themselves running on empty How are you doing today? Are you all 100% full? Are you with it? Or you find yourself hanging on by a string? I mean, you have fun. I, it, it, of course you have fun. What a great, awesome conference. I mean, just every... Every step of the way, every minute is calculated, part of, the, part of a, a schedule. There's no dead time. What a wonderful conference. And, and it, of course you have fun, but how are you spiritually? Have you heard the voice of God this week? Have you experienced his presence? Have he's made you weep and look within? Has you, have you felt God's healing hand on your life? Has he told you the reality of, of who you are and how you are spiritually? Have you felt that, 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 that heavy weight that God is convicting you? 
You see, it's not about the preachers and thank God for these wonderful, amazing preachers. They got, they, God can use, they, they have such, a, an, a, such an effective way of communicating the word of God. Powerful young preachers, powerful preachers. What an amazing uh, display of servants of God. But we're not here to hear them. We're here to hear the word of God, hear his voice, him work in my life. I don't know about you, but I don't want to continue going on empty. The problem is when we're empty, everything else can be in its place. (laughs) We don't realize it. Maybe that's why you don't have the joy of the Lord in your life. Maybe that's why you've lost the zeal of soul winning. Maybe that's why you're messing around with things on your phone that you before didn't do it. Maybe that's why on your iTunes you have all these Names that should not be there. Maybe that's why you're doing things behind your parents' back that you shouldn't be doing. Maybe that's why you talk in a way that you before never talked. Maybe that's why you're so indifferent and so disconnected. Is it because maybe you're Running on empty? You know, people, good Christians, they they become so spiteful, so angry, so little patience with other people's failures and other people's problems. And it's like, what happened to that person? He used to be such a good person, such a nice lady, and everything was great. And and now it's like there's no tolerance, there's no mercy, and everybody's... Is it maybe that you're running on empty? You used to sign up for the preaching competition. Man, I want to preach. And now you can care less about it. How are you doing today? Are you running on empty? You see, the will of God is a destiny. It's a journey. God wants to take you a long way. This is not a 100-yard dash. This is a, a, a long-distance uh, you know, running. As every one of us has a race to run, and God wants to take us to a place of, 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 his, of his will, of his good will. But some of us, we've stopped reading the word of God. Some of us, we stop praying. Some of us, we stop answering the preaching. Some of us can't hear God's voice. And that's how it is with you. You've heard tons of preaching, but you've heard men preach, but you've yet to hear God's voice in your life. Is it maybe because you're running on empty? I'm not going to prolong it. I'm just going to give you the application because enough preaching has happened this week. But I'm going to tell you what to do very simply if you're running on empty. Number one, turn down the noise. Jeremiah, all he was complaining about is my friends and their thing and murmuring against me and all they're waiting and they're talking about me. And it's just, you know, this world can be very noisy at times. The world sounds very noisy. Taylor Swift's of this world and the bad bunnies of this world. It sounds like they have the microphone. It sounds like they're right and everybody else is wrong. It sounds like they're in and we're all out. This world can be very noisy. The troubles at home, your parents' problems, the difficulties financially, the problems at church with other Christians. Sometimes the noise can take us to empty. It's time for you to turn down the volume of the noise and look for God's still small voice. The second thing we're supposed to do when we're running on empty is remember who's in the car with you. Jeremiah said on the verge of quitting, Brother Aaron, on the verge of quitting on God, he said, wait a minute, (laughs) wait a minute. He said, the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. The one factor that helped them keep going is that he remembered who was in the vehicle with him. The Bible says very clearly that that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? 
Sometimes this world looks big. Sometimes the problems look huge. Sometimes the, the difficulties and the strife at home looks gigantic like it's going to destroy us. But let me tell you, young person, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you would just remember today that it's God with you, that it's God with you, and he's called you, and he has a perfect plan for your life, and he makes no mistakes, and he's with you. And no matter what comes your way, no matter what the devil throws at you, no matter what, how much you might stumble, how much you might fail, how much you might be accused or ridiculed or, or murmured at or criticized. God is with you, and if he's for you, then no man can be against you. Remember who's in the vehicle with you. Because I have found many times in Christian life that I feel very alone. It's when I must remember that God is with me. Lastly, I said, number one, you're supposed to turn down the noise. Number two, you're supposed to remember who's in with you. And lastly, when you feel like you're running on empty, you feel like, I can't go no more. I'm done. I mean, I've seen too much, pa pa Brother Gomez. I've seen too much. I'm just done with it. There's too many hypocrites, too many people failing me, too much hypocrisy in church. I see people one way in church, another way at the park, another way at home. I'm just done with it. I'm just done with it, Brother Gomez. I, I just, I feel like I, I've tried too hard and, and no one's ever happy with me. I can never be good enough Christian for my parents. No matter what I do, they're always talking about all the bad I do and I just, I'm down. I'm done with it. I don't know what to do. If they want a worldly person, then I'm going to go to the world because I'm finished. I don't know. I, I don't have anything in me no more. I used to be happy. I used to be a, a happy girl. I used to be excited guy. I used to want to serve. I used to want to respond. I used to look to respond, and now I don't care, Brother Gomez. I'll tell you what to do if you're running on empty. Very simple. Don't forget to let the Lord do the driving. Jeremiah said this, but O Lord of hosts that triest the righteous and seeth the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them. For unto thee have I opened my cause. Jeremiah said, I'm not going to hang on to these reins. I'm going to let the Lord have his way. Listen, young person, the best thing you can do when you're, when you're running on empty and you feel like quitting on God and you feel like quitting on everything is let God be God. Stop trying. Stop forcing yourself. Stop trying to make it happen. Just let God be God. Let him break your heart. Let him talk to your heart. Let him remind you. Let him use a child if he needs to. Let him use a song if he needs to. Let him use a trial if he needs to. Let him use your parents. Let him use your youth pastor. Let him use a youth conference. Let him be God in your life before it's too late, before you run on empty, and before you have an accident, a tragic accident where there's no return. Let God be God in your life. Just give him the reins. Just say, Lord, I'm tired of driving. I'm tired of meeting everybody's expectations. I'm tired of me driving. Lord, I'm done. Would you please take my life and control it? Let it be yours to control. Lord, I'm finished driving. I want you to drive. I'm done. There's emptiness in me. I've read your Bible and I get nothing from it. I've prayed and I don't hear you answer. Lord, I've seen, God, what, what you can do in other people's life, but you're not doing it in mine. Lord, please take control of my life. Jeremiah very simply turned down the noise. Love not the world, neither the things of this world. You know, many times when Christians fall away, there's always a who did hinder you. You need to quiet the noise. That bad friend that you have in life, the one you started having, and since you have that person in your life, your spiritual life has been on the decline. It's time to turn down the noise. Remember who's on your side. Remember that God is in the car with you. He promised never to leave you nor forsake you. He is mine. He is mine and I am his. And nothing can separate us from the love of God.
no matter what you do, no matter how much you failed him, God still loves you and God still has plans for your life. No matter how much, how broken you feel, how empty you feel, God is enough. Listen to me, young person, God is enough. God is enough. You don't need to try something else. Just try God. He'll never fail you. Just come to him this afternoon and say, Lord, that's it. Will you please fill me with your presence? I'm on empty, Lord. I return to me the joy of my salvation. It created in me a, a new spirit, Lord. A, a, do something in my life because I'm, I'm on the verge. I feel like I'm on empty, Lord. I've heard these preachings before. I've gone to youth conference and nothing has changed. As a matter of fact, my life is worse today than it was yesterday. Lord, do something in my life. Take control. Jeremiah realized that day who was with him. And he realized that his job was to let God be God. How are you doing today? You can fool us. You can fool your youth pastor, even your parents. But you can't fool God. And if you're sincere with yourself, the reason why you have not heard anything in these last 35 minutes it's because you're on empty. And you can't seem to realize that. You're disconnected. You're so full of the noise in your life. Well, this guy, who is he? Well, I don't know. I don't respect him. I don't even know him. It's so noisy. Well, I don't know. I'm just done. I listen. I'm hungry. It's so noisy. Would you put down the noise? And let God speak to your heart. With every head bowed, every eye closed, Brother Judah, would you come?